Uh, this is really uh, part four of a series of webinars uh, looking at the different uh, benefits and features of Mode Frontier. My name is John Barnes. I'm a, the technical manager here at uh, Enginesoft UK. Um, what I'd like to go through with you today uh, is just um, a general introduction to Mode Frontier. We'll go and introduce a case study, but then we want to demonstrate um, uh, really integration and automation and how you do that inside Mode Frontier. And then there's uh, opportunity for any kind of questions and answers that uh, you want to give and I want to uh, uh, feed back to you. So uh, let's do that. Um, so what is integration and automation, uh, especially in terms of uh, Mode Frontier? Uh, this is the normal way in which we uh, describe things. You may have some uh, decisions to make, some input parameters to a process, uh, some, to an analysis that you have. Uh, and uh, then you have uh, your analysis packages that you wish to operate. Um, they may typically be done by different engineers uh, currently, but you want to integrate those together uh, so that one uh, a user has a control of all of those uh, applications. Uh, and then out from that, uh, we can get the performance. Now, there may be some uh, uh, scripting that is normally used to kind of uh, integrate those two things together. But what we're talking about here is a much smarter way that's built on a workflow that can connect those uh, uh, different bits of uh, software together, whether that's pre-processing, post-processing, uh, any kind of modification to your inputs and reading your outputs. Now that's uh, integration. Um, when we come to automation, uh, typically um, there is normally an engineer inside the, the loop. Uh, and they're looking at those uh, outputs, the performance, and then deciding what the inputs are. Uh, so automation comes really when we can start driving uh, that decision making by some smart algorithms. And it closes the lo loop off and allows uh, this process to, to run automatically. Uh, and that leaves the engineer somewhere on the uh, outside looking in, uh, not looking at designs one by one, but by 10 or by 100 at a time, uh, and looking at the much bigger picture and that's a much more systematic way of uh, operating and doing our engineering. Um, in addition, Mode Frontier, in terms of its integration and automation, uh, we also talk about uh, MDO or multidisciplinary optimization, uh, where we have different uh, analysis packages, uh, all designing the uh, same um, uh, component or assembly. Uh, and in this instance we've got a car body and we're doing a number of different analyses on it and for each analysis we might have some kind of target which is kind of represented here from zero to a hundred percent but at the same time we want to minimize the mass now we could take some baseline value um, and uh, obtain a, a certain level uh, but we we could do some optimization, some uh, single um, disciplinary optimization, uh, and we could minimize for mass, but that might come at uh, the cost of, of other um, disciplines. Uh, when it comes to MDO, what we're trying to do is really balance and trade off um, all of those uh, targets and uh, to get a balance across the whole design so that we uh, get a, a global optimum rather than some localized optimum uh, in our design space. Um, uh, this is just the example that we're going to be looking at and demonstrating. So I'll be going into the mode frontier, just showing you how to connect up uh, simply um, uh, a problem. Uh, here we have a, a silo. Uh, it's going to be modeled in uh, ANSYS Workbench. Uh, and we might want to minimize uh, the mass, but also minimize the, the stress and do a trade-off between those two uh, objectives. But at the same time, we may want to constrain uh, other aspects of the design. So in this case, uh, the deformation to be less than 1.5 uh, millimeters. Um, as well, in terms of this silo and the way that it's modeled, there's a number of parameters that we're going to sweep through and we're going to, to optimize for. So height, thickness, external radius and, and pressure. So there's a, some, a number of uh, standard values that we wish to, to, to take. Um, so that pretty much sets up uh, the, the problem. What I'd like to do now is, is go into um, uh, Mode Frontier itself and show you how simple it is to, to uh, integrate and automate uh, that particular process. So here we have the Mode Frontier workflow and we can drag on an ANSYS workbench node. Uh, so that's our discipline, our single discipline that we want to connect to. Uh, and then we can go into this node 
uh, and then select a particular project that we've been working on that's already been set up and parameterized inside uh, ANSYS Workbench. Uh, we click on this uh, project file and uh, once we've done that, we click on Parameter Chooser. Now that goes away and introspects that uh, ANSYS Workbench file. Um, if this was a, a, a different um, uh, application, uh, it would work in very much the, the same way. We would uh, look into a, another input file and introspect it in the same way. Uh, and then once it's introspected, it, it, it's found a number of uh, parameters, uh, input parameters and output parameters uh, relevant to that model. Now. The nice thing with Mode Frontier is that to integrate um, uh, your inputs and outputs, it's just so simple that you literally do just click on the inputs uh, on the left-hand side. So this is everything that's inside the Workbench project, and then you drag them into the Mode Frontier uh, workspace. And, and the same for the outputs. Uh, there's a number of uh, outputs that we want to connect to, and then we can just drag those into Mode Frontier. And once we've dragged those in, we click OK, click OK, and Mode Frontier has already built a, a workflow, a logic to be able to run this model. Uh, there's a couple of red crosses that um, need to be dealt with uh, to ensure that uh, the model uh, can run. Um, I'm just going to untick uh, this, and that should solve that red cross. Um, but now, we just need to set our, our logic and our strategy for uh, doing this op optimization. Uh, so the, the first thing that we would need to do is we've got the uh, four inputs that have been dragged from ANSYS Workbench uh, and we need to set their upper and lower bounds, really the, the size of the design space that we want to explore. Uh, so for, for pressure we want to look at um, a lower bound of 100 uh, to uh, 2000. Uh, for the surface body thickness we want to look at uh, 0 0.005 to uh, 0.03 and then outside uh, radius 1 to 2 and finally height 5 to 10. So that's an engineering decision um, of what kind of size of design space you want to explore and where you believe that your uh, results will lie um, and we can set those limits but you can also set how it, uh, it explores between those two limits by setting a step size. So these are the different levels in between the upper and lower bound that the value can take. So uh, 50 steps for pressure, um, 0 0.001 for a uh, surface for the outside radius, uh, 0 0.1. Uh, and for height, we can have uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And that's all that you need to do to set up uh, the inputs. Um, there's nothing to really set for the outputs apart from uh, the particular format that we want the value to be reported by. Um, but now we can apply uh, what kind of objective we want to put on each one of these uh, outputs. So uh, we said uh, initially that we wanted to minimize the mass. That seems logical uh, that uh, we can take the mass and give it a name, mass min, connect it into uh, that output, uh, and then tell it to minimize the value quite straightforward and we even see that the arrow goes from pointing up to pointing down because we're minimizing the value. Um, in the same way uh, we want to minimize the stress so we drag another objective and I can call this one stress uh, min and then we can connect that to that output and then tell it to minimize uh, that output as well and then for the deformation, we don't want to minimize or maximize it, but we want to constrain it to make sure that uh, uh, the deformation um, is less than uh, 1.5. Okay, I think I've given the wrong name. Uh, deformation less than 1.5. Yeah, that's it. Plug that in there and uh, then go and tell it to be less than 1.5 inside. And that's setting up that logic quite straightforward there. So that's pretty much all of the integration required. We can now control ANSYS Workbench externally by uh, putting in new inputs, reading what the outputs are, and then telling it uh, what to um, 
try and do with that process, whether to minimize or maximize certain outputs. Um, and then on this uh, process flow left to right, we can now define a strategy. Uh, and we're going to use um, mode one two's proprietary algorithm pilot. Uh, it's very straightforward, and in fact, we've got uh, another. Our next webinar is going to be looking at uh, pilot in more detail. But um, for now, we're just going to tell it to run 120 designs um, using the pilot algorithm. Now, once that's done, everything is uh, got no red crosses on, there's no errors, and pretty much within uh, a matter of minutes, uh, I've been able to generate, integrate um, a whole process. I could go on to add uh, many more different uh, nodes from different disciplines after this ANSYS workbench, either in uh, a series or in parallel, um, and in a similar way, just connect very quickly into these um, uh, applications. Now that's really the integration side. Uh, now we need to do the automation side. So uh, we've set up this um, uh, strategy for optimization. And now all that we simply do is we click the, the run button. We then tell it to save the file and it will go away and then run an optimization and then it will as it's running it will keep changing the input parameters explore that design space and find an area of the design space that will satisfy that constraint and minimize those two objectives now i'm not going to continue uh from there and wait until those results come back uh, i hope to do this webinar uh, in a short uh, amount of time so we're going to revert back to one that I've done earlier uh, just to show you what the result of, of this is. So if I go back in here, this one's already been run. And uh, I go to the design space um, where all the data has been uh, uh, written. Uh, so all the data that has come from this uh, process, this integration and optimization on this uh, workflow uh, is now all reported inside the design table. And you can see that we have uh, the series of, of all of the combinations of input parameters here in the, the green columns and then what their corresponding outputs are uh, and objectives and constraint values on the output. Now notice some of them are in yellow because they've failed this um, constraint um, that these values are above uh, 1.5. Uh, the early values are yellow, but as the algorithms progressed, it's learned how to satisfy the, these constraints and more and more white designs have, have appeared. Um, so that's just a, a general um, way of reporting, but it's much nicer. There's a whole range of post-processing tools, which we've gone into some of them in uh, other webinars, uh, but we would just simply be able to plot then uh, a bubble chart of, of this data uh, to look at the trade-off between our two objectives, mass and stress, and then the third axis will be the run ID. So here we're trying to minimize both the stress and the, the, the mass, and we're trying to push the solution down into this bottom left-hand corner. The red designs are the much later designs, um, and we can see how the algorithm has perhaps started out into this region where the blue designs are, and then it's pushed it uh, down towards uh, this uh, corner here. Uh, now I can turn off some of the unfeasible designs. So these are ones here uh, don't satisfy the constraints. So I can turn those off, uh, leaving me with just uh, the feasible designs. Now if I right click, I can mark my Pareto designs, which are my optimal, and then it highlights all of these around here. Now I could have ran this uh, optimization for more points and got a much, much more densely populated uh, a set of optimal solutions, but hopefully you see here uh, that quite quickly uh, we've gone from integrating, uh, automating, then running the designs. Okay, how long it might take to, to run each uh, design? Maybe just a couple of minutes in the, this scenario. Uh, so, but maybe in an, an hour's time, you could have come back and uh, created uh, this kind of uh, plot and, and been able to have seen where your optimal set of solutions are. Um, so that really concludes what I want to, to show you is, is really the, the ease and the quickness that you can uh, get to uh, really running something as complicated or what would appear to be complicated as an optimization very, very quickly. The, the bottleneck in a lot of um, this kind of work is simply building the, the logic to be able to get uh, 
two pieces of software to communicate to each other uh, and in this way using this introspection node uh, all the work has been done for you uh, in that the API um, has already been written to be able to do that communica communication for us. So this is a really powerful method. Uh, there are other methods inside MoFrontier to, to communicate. What we call this is a, is a direct uh, integration node and we have many down here uh, on this menu for many different um, software packages, CAE tools. We also have a range for, for CAD tools and then scripts and, and mathematics tools uh, of ways in which we can communicate to a wide range of um, applications so uh, that's it I mean if there's any questions uh, please uh, type them in and I'll be happy to answer them um, while you think about that um, I will just uh, flick back to the presentation uh, and just uh, make you aware that there is yet another uh, webinar that we are going to run this time uh, beyond the 30th of, of May uh, all to do with steering your optimization the smart way. So um, what I mentioned earlier when we ran the Pylops optimizer, um, we're going to look at that in a little bit more depth. Well, what is so great about this particular um, Pylops optimizer and really how to um, use Mode Frontier to, in a very easy way. Uh, so how, how to quickly get up to speed with doing these uh, complex uh, workflows in, in a very timely manner. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I'll just uh, I'll wait for any questions. And if not, um, I'll log off. Thank you very much.